From classic haunted mansions boasting fascinating histories and chilling supernatural infestations, to old military structures where the restless spirits of soldiers long deceased continue to fulfill their rounds nightly. Are you ready to explore some of the most prolific hauntings from our original 13 colonies? Number 13. The Flushing Quaker Meeting House the Flushing Quaker Meeting House, located off Northern Boulevard in the Flushing area of Queens in New York City, New York, is a historic site boasting the title of being the oldest house of worship in the whole of the state and the second oldest Quaker Meeting House in the nation. Original portions of the home constructed in 1694 as a small frame structure now make up the easterly third of our current building, with expansions taking place from 1716 to 1719. Through the American Revolutionary War, the meeting house was seized for a time by the Royal Army. In 1776, it was converted into a barracks, prison, and hospital site for soldiers. And following the war, in 1783, it was utilized once more as a spiritual meeting place. The Flushing Quaker Meeting House remains open into the present, and in recent years has been saturated in reports of paranormal activity. An ethereal figure clad in white garments and brandishing a sword, thought to be the spirit of a revolutionary British soldier, has been sighted lurking about after dark. And in the graveyard out back, many have described unearthly cold spots, as well as encounters with both shadowy silhouettes and full-bodied manifestations that wander amongst the headstones. Number 12. The Powder Magazine the Powder Magazine, located off Cumberland Street in Charleston, South Carolina, is a historic gunpowder magazine and museum that boasts the title of being the oldest surviving building from the former province of Carolina. Historically, construction of the building itself was authorized in 1703, though it wouldn't be completed until 1713. And until the late American Revolutionary War, it would be utilized as a powder magazine, after which it would pass through a number of hands and would serve as a print shop, livery stable, wine cellar, carriage house, and more. From 1902 and onward, this site has operated as a museum under the National Society of the Colonial Dames in America. The magazine remains open to this day and showcases a range of educational material pertaining to its long history. Over its many years, countless rumors of supernatural phenomena have surfaced from both visitors and staff alike, with reports of encounters with the spirit of Gabriel Manigal, who ran a wine cellar through the early 19th century, and whose ghost is usually spied seemingly admiring his long-lost collection, with the manifestation of colonial-era soldiers, often spied guarding doors or walking rounds, and with the phantom of the infamous pirate Anne Bonny, who's been observed roaming the building as well as adjacent streets and other historic haunts across town. Number 11. Independence Hall Independence Hall, located off Chestnut Street in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, is a historic civic building recognized as a designated UNESCO World Heritage Site, one that acts as the centerpiece of the Independence National Historical Park. Historically, the hall was initially constructed between 1732 and 1753 as the Pennsylvania State House, and on July 4th of 1776 would act as the site of approval for the Declaration of Independence. In 1787, the United States Constitution was debated and adopted on site. In 1865, President Abraham Lincoln's body would be laid out within the building for a time, as his funeral procession finished its route. Through the 19th and 20th centuries, the building would undergo multiple renovations, and in 1948, Independence National Historical Park was established. Independence Hall remains open to the public for tours, and has long been surrounded by local lore regarding its many purported hauntings. The spirit of revolutionary traitor Benedict Arnold, who raised through the ranks of the Continental Army all the way up to Major General before defecting to the British in 1780, has been spotted roaming about, a bitter and remorseful look on his face. Several entities in 18th century attire have been spied wandering the first floor of the central clock tower, and a full-bodied apparition matching the description of founding father Benjamin Franklin has been encountered. Number 10. The Jonathan Hager House Museum the Jonathan Hager House, located within Hagerstown City Park off Key Street in Hagerstown, Maryland, is a historic two-story stone abode turned museum that originally played home to Jonathan Hager, the city's founder. 
Historically, in 1739, Hager would purchase 200 acres of land and would construct a flagstone house atop two water springs. And in 1745, he would sell the property to Jacob Rohrer, after which the land would remain in Rohrer family hands until 1944, when it was acquired by the Washington County Historical Society. In 1954, the restored house was given to the city, and in 1962, it was open to the public as a museum. The museum remains in operation to this day, offering those interested a glimpse at the area's history, along with the history of the Hager family. End of stories check out a number of resident hauntings, with staff and visitors reporting objects sighted moving on their own, disembodied voices, screams and laughter, and knocking heard from within walls. Through its history, at least 13 documented deaths, including those of several Rohrer children, have transpired on site, some by natural causes, others by accidents, and others still by nefarious means. And full-bodied apparitions linked to these deaths have been encountered about. Lastly, the spirit of a lady in green has been spotted staring from windows and walking the halls, and a ghostly man in black has been known to stalk the living. Number 9. Fort Wetherill State Park Fort Wetherill State Park, located off the southern tip of Connecticut Island in Jamestown, Rhode Island, is a 61.5-acre public park expanse gracing the eastern passage of Narragansett Bay that's purposed to preserve the site's historic defenses. Initially, an early earthwork fortification called Fort Dumpling was established by Patriot forces in 1776 and was later used by American, British, and even French forces at various periods through the American Revolution. In 1798, construction was started on a permanent fort, and in 1899, Fort Wetherill was erected over top of both the earlier defenses and would remain in use until 1946, after which it was abandoned for a time. In 1972, the fort and its grounds were acquired by the state and were reopened as the very park that remains to this day. In the present, Fort Wetherill State Park offers a range of trails, options in scuba diving, countless picnic sites, a number of historic structures, and, if legends hold any water, a range of restless spirits, with both officials and visitors reporting encounters with the ghosts of soldiers long deceased, as well as with spectral dogs, assumed to be hellhounds, that were actually documented all the way back to when the fort was first active, when they were recorded as stalking or going after soldiers, a number of which would mysteriously die shortly after. Lastly, in 1985, the bodies of four murdered women were discovered in nearby waters, and their souls are said to linger around the docks. Number 8. The Three Chimneys Inn and Frost Sawyer Tavern the Three Chimneys Inn and Frost Sawyer Tavern, also known as the Hill Woodman Frost House, and located off New Market Road in Durham, New Hampshire, is a historic inn and tavern boasting the titles of being the oldest house in the city, as well as one of the oldest in the whole of New Hampshire. Historically, the site's back L was first constructed in 1649 by Valentine Hill as a family home. In 1680, a slew of additions were performed by his son, Nathaniel Hill, and in 1694, the property would survive a brutal native assault. Eventually, the property was inherited by Jonathan Woodman from the Hill side of his family, and at some point following 1796, was deeded to George Frost. Impressively, the Frost family would retain ownership of the site until 1987, and in 1998, it would be re-established as the Three Chimneys Inn and Frost Sawyer Tavern, which remains open to this day. This old abode is said to house the restless spirit of a girl named Hannah, a descendant of Valentine Hill, who, according to legend, drowned in the nearby Oyster River. And both staff and guests of the tavern have reported disembodied footsteps from empty rooms, deadbolts that lock and unlock themselves, objects sighted moving on their own, and extreme cold spots. Also reported on site and thought not to be tied to Hannah are disembodied voices, the sensation of being touched by unseen hands, constant electronic malfunctions, inexplicable muddy footprints, and encounters with both shadowy figures and silhouettes in old-fashioned clothing, usually spotted out of the peripheral or just rounding corners. Number 7. The Proprietary House the Proprietary House, located off Kearney Avenue in Perth Amboy, New Jersey, is a historic abode turned museum that's recognized as the only proprietary governor's mansion of the original 13 colonies still standing. 
Historically, construction of the estate transpired between the years of 1762 and 1764, with it first being occupied by Chief Justice Frederick Smith from 1766 until 1773. Also in 1773, the mansion was refitted to act as residence to the royal governor of New Jersey. In the late 18th century, a large fire damaged the home, and new owner John Ratone would set to work restoring it, while also adding a large wing, and later in 1808, transforming the property into a hotel called the Brighton. Sadly, the Brighton would encounter trouble during the War of 1812, and in 1817 one Matthias Bruin would purchase the property. While in Bruin family hands from 1883 to 1903, grounds would be used to house families of deceased ministers, until 1904 when the property was placed back on the market and subsequently passed through a series of owners, before, in 1966, landing in the hands of the state, who would restore and open the site to the public in 1976. Over the years, the proprietary house has been shrouded in a number of ghost stories, with staff and visitors telling of a spectral Revolutionary War soldier spied roaming the house, the spirit of a woman in white sighted standing in the dining room staring out through the window, and the ghost of a little boy in blue who's been known to open doors for and even greet the living. Also reported randomly and confined to no area in particular are the unnerving sensations of being tapped, touched, or even grabbed by icy, unseen hands. Number 6. Charles Island Charles Island, located roughly a half mile off the coast of Milford in Connecticut out of the Long Island Sound, is a 14-acre island only accessible via air or watercraft, or by its sandbar, which only shows at low tide. Historically, this island was frequented by native tribes long before the arrival of Europeans, and it's said Pogasset chief and Sentawai resided on it through the summer months, and claimed it as his favorite fishing spot. Originally called Pokwahog, the island was renamed as Milford in 1639 upon English settlement, and in 1657 it was renamed as Charles Island, following purchase by Charles Deal. Over subsequent years it would be passed through various owners, serving as a private residence, a resort, a religious retreat, and more, until finally, through the 1930s, being acquired by the state. Today, Charles Island acts as part of the Silver Sands State Park and is open to visitors through most of the year, though it should be noted the sandbar floods twice a day and the crossing window to and fro is quite brief. In 1699, Captain William Kidd visited Milford, and legend tells that during his stay, he buried treasure somewhere on Charles Island, with some claiming he hid it below a large boulder called Hog Rock. Though many have searched through the years, Kidd's loot remains unlocated, and some claim may be protected by the ghost of the legendary seaman himself. Also reported at Charles Island are disembodied voices, orbs visible to the naked eye, and encounters with apparitions and clothing spanning the centuries. And strangely, a ridiculously high number of drownings and fatal accidents have occurred near. Lastly, the whole of the spit is rumored to harbor an ancient, native curse spun by Ancentawai himself, wrathful over losing his land to the English. Number 5. The Cape May Lose Ferry Terminal the Cape May Lewis Ferry Terminal, located off Cape Henlopen Drive in Lewes, Delaware, is a popular ferry terminal sitting atop a historic graveyard that many suspect is responsible for a number of the strange happenings and inexplicable phenomena throughout the area. Historically, the entrance to the Delaware Bay was discovered in 1609 by Captain Henry Hudson, and from its earliest days, bodies washing up ashore, most results of deaths at sea, were not uncommon. Eventually, a graveyard was set up at the site of our modern terminal to hold the countless unidentified waterlogged remains. As decades and then centuries passed, the graveyard was all but covered up. In 1964, the Cape May Luz Ferry Terminal was constructed atop it, and in 1983, a marker was erected in memorial of those buried deep beneath the structure and its surrounding area. Today, the terminal continues to serve the locale, with modern ferries capable of accommodating up to 100 vehicles and 1,000 passengers on many cruises across the bay. If one desecrated cemetery wasn't grounds enough for some extreme supernatural activity, get this. Following archaeological investigation, it's now believed that, long before its rediscovery, this site actually may have held an earlier native burial ground that was also disturbed and covered over. And throughout the area, many have reported phantom puffs of tobacco smoke with no source, disembodied crying, 
orbs visible to the naked eye, and accounts of doors and windows opening and closing on their own. Misty white figures, shadowy silhouettes, and entities in colonial era attire have been encountered across the property, and the ghost of a deceased police officer named Sonny often appears so real, unsuspecting ferrygoers have described stopping and chatting with him for minutes before watching him fade away. Number 4. King's Chapel Burying Ground King's Chapel Burying Ground, located off Tremont Street in Boston, Massachusetts, is a historic graveyard boasting the title of being the oldest cemetery in the whole of the city, and though it sits right next to King's Chapel, claims no denomination or affiliation to any church, and has been owned by the city since its creation. Historically, this old yard was initially established in 1630, and in accordance with custom was officialized by the interment of the land's original owner, Isaac Johnson. This cemetery would act as Boston's only graveyard for nearly 30 years, until the forming of Copps Hill Burying Ground in 1659, and burials would cease in 1896, aside from a handful that continued into the 1920s on reserved plots. Today, this old yard claims 505 headstones, 78 tombs of which 36 have markers, and more than 59 footstones designated to areas where 1,000 interments were laid within a small space. In its earliest years, the graveyard was not well organized, with plots situated haphazardly, and through the 19th century, the head and footstones were actually moved into neater rows, while their bodies were left in the original locations. And this disturbance and lack of recognition is believed by many to have left a large number of spirits restless, with staff and visitors reporting extreme cold spots, orbs in the backgrounds of photography, and encounters with shadowy figures and full-bodied apparitions in clothing spanning the eras. One popular tale tells that, long ago, a man was buried alive somewhere within King's Chapel, and many have recounted hearing his disturbing screams from deep below the earth. Another story tells of a woman interred long ago that was too tall for her casket. It's said the mortician cut her head off and placed it between her legs, and to this day, a surprising number of reports detail encounters with the ghost of a decapitated woman, her head in her hands as she drifts about the yard's aged markers. Number 3. The Pirate's House the Pirate's House, located off East Broad Street in Savannah, Georgia, is a long-running pirate-themed restaurant and tavern that boasts a segment called the Herb House, which, shockingly, is actually the oldest standing structure in the whole of the state. Historically, in James Oglethorpe's first plans for Savannah, the plot holding the Pirate's House was initially designed as a botanical garden, which would produce the very peach trees the state is now recognized for. And in 1734, a small building, the Herb House, was erected to act as the gardener's quarters. In 1754, the gardens were closed down, and the herb house was built onto and transformed into an inn and tavern for local seamen. Sadly, over time, the property would become worn down, until 1945 when it was purchased by the Savannah Gas Company. One Mary Hillier, wife of the company's president, would take a personal interest in the building, saving it from destruction, and later restoring and renovating it to its current state. The modern restaurant on site was founded in 1953 by Herb Traub and Jim Casey, and stands today as one of the city's most popular attractions. The Pirate's House remains open into the present as a family-friendly, full-service establishment and event space, and according to legend, harbors its fair share of paranormal infestations. The building itself is connected to underground tunnels, through which it's suspected many were kidnapped, killed, or shanghaied, and near the now covered-over entrance, those passing by have reported voices, moans, and screams of terror from within, while disembodied footsteps, shadowy forms, and encounters with the apparitions of semen and aged attire are all but common throughout the rest of the establishment. Lastly, an entity matching the description of Captain Flint from Robert Louis Stevenson's 1882 novel, Treasure Island, has been spied about. Although Flint is a fictional creation, some suspect he may have been based off a very real privateer who lived and died within the pirate's house. Number 2. George Washington's Mount Vernon George Washington's Mount Vernon, located off Mount Vernon Memorial Highway in none other than Mount Vernon, Virginia, is the historic home of founding father and first U.S. President George Washington and his wife Martha. 
Historically, the Washington family would first acquire this plot of land in 1674. Circa 1734, the family would expand its estate, and the same year, George's father, Augustine, would construct the original sections of the old abode. In 1761, George would become sole owner of the family estate. Through the 1750s and 1770s, he would further expand upon the property, and following his passing in 1799, the estate would be handed down through several generations, and would endure increasing neglect and dilapidation with each passing year. In 1858, the house, along with portions of its land, were sold to the Mount Vernon Ladies Association, who would fully restore and reopen it to the public. George Washington's Mount Vernon remains open to this day and offers the ability to tour not just the home, but also several additional original and reconstructed outbuildings. A tomb on site holds the remains of George and Martha, amongst other relatives, and not surprisingly, the property is rumored to be haunted by members of the Washington family along with other associated parties, with both officials and visitors reporting alarms that sound with no known cause, the disembodied jingling of keys, disembodied voices and the phantom sensation of being tapped or touched. Several spectral servants have been spied seemingly going about daily tasks from life, the manifestations of children have been sighted and heard playing about, and the spirit of a man in 19th century clothing, who is said to get angry and impatient with the living, has been encountered. Lastly, this aged premises still holds the bed that George Washington died in, and many have told of meaningful run-ins with the ghost of the man himself, who seemingly only appears to select living, usually to impart crucial bits of wisdom from beyond. Number 1. Fort Raleigh National Historic Site Fort Raleigh National Historic Site, located at the northern end of Roanoke Island in Dare County on the outer banks of North Carolina, is an infamous location that played host to the lost colony of Roanoke, the first English colony in the United States. Historically, the first group of colonists to arrive to the area did so in 1585, but would face resource shortages and were forced to sail back to England the following year. In August of 1587, a group of around 115 settlers would arrive to Roanoke Island, and later the same year, one John White would sail back to England for additional supplies, with warring between England and Spain greatly slowing his journey. White would finally return to the colony in 1590, to where he left his wife, daughter, and infant granddaughter, to find no trace of the colony, its inhabitants, or any clues as to where they might have gone, aside from the word Croatoan, which was carved into a wooden post. In 1862, amidst the Civil War, Union forces would occupy the area and would establish a refuge for enslaved individuals, and in 1941, the Fort Raleigh National Historic Site was formed to preserve what was left of the lost colony. The site remains open into the present and offers breathtaking Elizabethan gardens as a memorial to the vanished community. Into the present, several theories as to what exactly happened to the lost colony have formed, with some speculating they simply moved inland, or that possibly they were absorbed into a welcoming native tribe, while others theorized they were attacked and killed, or that their disappearance was the result of something otherworldly. Strangely, following the colony's disappearance, a party of men was left to defend the island but was never seen or heard from again, and subsequent return investigations yielded signs of a brutal massacre. Across the site, many have reported high EMF levels, chilling EVPs, extreme cold spots, strange mists that float with seeming sentience, disembodied voices and screams, and encounters with apparitions in colonial-era clothing. Virginia Dare, granddaughter to John White, was the first child born in the New World, and legend tells she was adopted into the Croatoan tribe and grew to become an adored maiden by the name of Winona Ska. This legend furthers to tell that as an adult, Winona Ska desired to marry the chief's son, but that an evil witch doctor wanted her for himself, and when she rejected the doctor, that he turned her into a white doe. Upon learning of this dark magic, it said the chief's son hunted her and pierced her heart with a pearl arrow, intended to transform her back, but that it resulted in her death instead. Heartbroken, it said he begged the earth for her resurrection, a wish that was granted, but that she was returned as the doe and swiftly fled into the forests. To this day, a ghostly white doe has been reported throughout the woods of the Outer Banks, sometimes glowing faintly or moving at unnatural speeds.
Thanks for joining us on this tour of some of the most blood-chilling paranormal activity spread across the original 13 colonies. If you enjoyed hearing our histories and ghost stories, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, turn notifications on, throw us a like, and share us with anyone you think deserves a good scare. We'll catch you all next time.